In the past month, I have received money from not one, not two, but six unexpected places. And it definitely has something to do with what I call astro hacking, or something I've been doing recently within the past three weeks to basically bring the money in from random places. Uh, almost random. I mean, it's, these are places that not even, I mean, why would they do that? Um, not a scam or anything. They're like legit, legit sources. Um, I explain how to do astro hacking in my book, I'm a Modder for the Spectrum Astrology 5, towards the very end. And one of the things that I note is that in order to shift gears in your chart, you often have to do something that historically would have been uncomfortable. There were reasons that you never did it, right? And so mine entails a certain degree of arrogance, a certain degree of uh, um, uh, a kind of, it's not a me first thing, but but there's a, there's a shift in how I conduct my daily business, which helps me basically advance that. Uh, if you want to do it carefully in a way that doesn't hurt people, but um, the unfortunate fact is that sometimes people's astral setup is conducive to things that are not as socially favorable um, in, in order for you to get something done that you have not been able to do. And the best thing that you can do is try to pull out the positive sides of that. Not every asteroid in the chart is fundamentally positive. Some of them are just negative, basically, and your job, and I list tables of stuff like this in Alma Mater, is to take those negative asteroids and spin them. Um, astral hacking is a very interesting kind of activity. Uh, really, if you have a strong familiarity with the signs and how they're arranged, you can essentially call anything you want into your life. And so I thought that I would uh, put a recording out here, which shows you how to do something which I haven't looked at for a long time, but I recently discovered an asteroid that, that speaks right to it, and that is how to seduce somebody. Um, it's kind of funny because um, this is not my normal priority. It, normally, I just kind of concentrate on research and statistics and things like that. But on occasion, I'll find something astrologically that allows you to pull something off, which is the, the, the new school equivalent of an old school like love potion or something like that. Uh, very similar to the kinds of cocktails I have in Hayden's Book of Sinistry. But this recent asteroid that I discovered was so so clear in what it did that I had to record on it. And I also wanted to record on the whole family of asteroids related to the topic. So if somebody uh, just stopped me on the street and they said, Ajani, what do I need? I have this person that I like and, and um, I really want to just, <laughs> for, for lack of a better word, uh, better phrase, score with them. Um, is there, any, is there anything that you can tell me astrologically? And I'm like, yeah. Um, you need three asteroids to look at if that's all you want. And I have them displayed here. Nanina, Deira, and Hera. Now, uh, these asteroids, if you don't if, if you don't care about anything else, you just want to put that notch on your bedpost, these are the asteroids that you're going to want to know about the other person. You do not need their ascendant or midheaven. You only really need the duodecanate that these things are sitting in. Um, but before I get into the details of what these three asteroids do, maybe you're familiar with Hera because I've talked about it a lot before. Um, it, it, it helps to know how to read duodecanates. Now, duodecanates is my word for signs within signs. So in astrology, you've got the 12 signs. Uh, you have Aries here and Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. These are the self signs. So whatever falls in here tends to take on the character of things that you feel within yourself. Leo, Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio tend to take on the character of others, your interaction with others. It's still you in your chart, but it's kind of your dynamic with another object, another person, a wish, or the character that you've built up in the past, and that is Leo. Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces are the world asteroids. These things are related to abstractions, um, concepts, cultures, structures, rules, information spaces, and what I call nexting, the next flow of events. It's kind of the, the uh, fold around of time, how today becomes tomorrow. And that last one is Pisces. So those are the basic signs. And when you start 
chopping up a sign into its own sign. So let's say you're doing a Libra thing. You're interacting with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Inside of Libra, there's a cycle of interaction. It starts, it progresses, you send information to the other person, the other person gets it, it progresses, and then it comes back to you. And so you can, dis you can basically take Libra and chop it up into its own signs, but they work like gears, right? So gears go like this. This one wants to spin in one direction, and this one wants to spin in the other direction. So within signs, even though it goes Aries, Taurus, Gemini in the outer circle, Within the inner circle, it goes Libra.Aries, Libra.Taurus, Libra.Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. You take that 30 degrees and you divide it into 12 pieces. And so for 2.5 degrees, you'll get subsigns. And that actually ends up being essential to astral hacking. Because if you think about it, we do more than 12 different kinds of things per day. Now, I told you a couple of minutes ago that you have self, you have other, and you have world signs. Um, but you also have these, these uh, quadruplicities here. So, well, actually triplicities. I, I forget what, which one they're called because it's, it's jargon at, at some point. But... All the fire signs, all the earth signs, all the air signs, and all the water signs. The fire signs are basically about how you project. So for Aries, it's the projection of the self. It's kind of like your genetic imperative. You just you have this feeling. You, 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 you're, you're inclined to see things in a certain way, listen to certain kinds of music, start things in certain ways just because your body says, hey, it's, it's time for that right now. Leo is projection onto others based on who you've been and, and you know social norms and training and things like that you now present a face to some direct interactant uh, the thing to note about leo is that we don't care what the other interactant thinks we're just projecting onto them it's going to be different from libra because with libra we're getting feedback um, sagittarius is where you project in a culture or the culture projects around you the earth signs are all about identity. They are, they are essentially the synonyms or the equals of it. So if you identify as a parent, a parent kind of concept would be this object that sits out and is equal to you. And people use that in order to know who you are. So with Taurus, these are the things you identify with. With Virgo, these are the way you join concepts, you reconcile things. With Sagittarius, these are the way structures in the world are reconciled. Rules, skeletal systems, laws, things that form walls around which you're not supposed to pass. Um, really, that gives you structure, buildings and, and continents and things like that. With the air signs, it's a feedback system. Gemini is more like feedback within your own brain or body. So your mannerisms, when I talk with my hands, that is one way of using my Gemini within the self. Um, but also my thinking, right? That's also Gemini. Libra is where you're passing that information back and forth. Could be to another person in conversation. Could be your enemy. It's like, well, they did this and I did that. Could be an instrument. You play the instrument, a sound is produced, and you want to hit, you want to pluck another sound, whatever. Could be video games. You hit the button, your character does this, and now you hit the button in receipt to have your character do the next thing. Any feedback system is what Libra is. It's associated with love. Um, mainly because if I'm still engaging you and I'm still getting feedback, it almost doesn't matter whether you're a friend or an enemy. I'm still trading with you. I'm still playing the game. Uh, and then there's Aquarius, which is feedback within information systems like technology, electricity, when there's vibes of feedback going on around you. Lastly, there are the water signs. Um, this is where you're, you're, you're like, okay, I got these three states down. Now I want to project them onto the next level. I'm going from self, and given what happened with the self, I want to project onto the other realm. Or given the other realm, I want to project onto the world realm. And given the world realm, I want to project onto the self realm. So cancer is about what you're journeying toward what you want. It's often associated with tension. And being the fourth sign, it is associated with squares as well. And so how you handle tension, how you handle things that are not going your way, where you have to kind of plant the seeds for something now in order to reap the benefits later, 
but you're not getting those benefits right now and you're stressed about it, that is told by cancer. Scorpio is where you want somebody else or some other thing to go your way. Interestingly, Scorpio is not just associated with sex, death, and the occult. It's also associated with research because you're trying to make the facts line up a certain way. Pisces is associated with there's this mood, there's this inclination for the world to push you into the next stage. Among other things, it's associated with art, dream, sleeping, things like that, where you're on autopilot in your world as far as what happens to you. Okay, If you want to start astro hacking, you need to basically know all that. Um, but know that there's the self, there's the other, there's the world, there's projected identities, feedback systems, and what you want next. And that, and you'll be fine. So for example, if you've got a, an asteroid or a planet here in Pisces 5, see this is Pisces, and remember they go backwards because they're like gears. Even though the wheel goes this way on the outside, it goes this way on the inside. So this is Pisces.Aries, Pisces.Taurus, Pisces.Gemini, and so on. And they're divided into 2.5 degree slices, right? So Hera right about here, this is the fifth slice. And so it's basically Pisces.Leo. So if you have Pisces.Leo, what does it mean in terms of astro hacking? What it means is that in the broad context of what you feel like kind of doing, you're, you know, the, the, mood is, the mood is conducive to you doing a certain thing. Specifically, it's conducive to you projecting in a certain way. You just feel like being something. You feel like showing or interacting with something. Um, putting yourself in that feel like context when you're showing you're doing Pisces five. Now with that as background, let me tell you about the asteroids of seduction. So this is actually my chart. And, uh, since I'm interested in saving humans as data and I'm interested in being saved as data, I eventually plan to basically air all my stuff, like my whole world is going to be part of a, a uh, data set that can be pulled from. And so if you want to regenerate personalities on a holodeck or something, but you want the personality to be more than just a program, but to actually respond to you as they would have when they were alive um, and keep evolving, right? Um, we need certain kinds of data. And my, my plan, I guess, across all my books is to put more and more and more of that stuff out there it's not always the friendliest stuff, but of course, if you're going to save a whole human as data, you're going to save the whole human as data. Even the, uh, the uh, not so varnished sides of, uh, of things. So this is one of those pieces. Um, Nanina is the asteroid of turn on. It's not always a visceral carnal turn on, but it's just where you really feel like, oh, well, you know, your animal, your inner animal is sparked. Um, and that is located here in Aquarius 11. Now, how do we interpret Aquarius 11? Remember, this is Aquarius, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 11, 12. So this is Aquarius.Aquarius. .Aquarius. In the context of information passing, we're going to engage information passing. It's the talk of the talk, and therefore it's associated with uniqueness. You can get more, by the way, on these specific duodecanates in um, my last couple of books of the series, Alma Mater and Laurentia. Uh, they tell you basically what, what these mean, but Alma Mater has more in terms of what each of these 144 subsections mean. Um, but Aquarius.Aquarius .Aquarius is essentially uniqueness. I am turned up or turned, uh, I don't want to say turned on, because again, it's not always that, although... When you're trying to seduce somebody, Nanina does double duty. It's not so G-rated um, role is to turn people on sexually. So um, normally this is not what's going on in your day, but, but you can use it for those purposes, right? And so I am turned up by uniqueness. Um, if you're not unique in something, then I often usually don't care at least um, in terms of being motivated to have my inner animal, inner hormones kind of register you. Um, it's also for that reason that uh, I 
so you're going to find this in anybody's chart, right? As you are looking at their charts and you're trying to find out what their weaknesses are so that you can go, you know, have your will with them, your, your way with them, um, you will find that they also have mechanisms to prevent stuff like that, to prevent you from coming in and messing with their lives. So one thing I've learned over the years is not to reply to anybody unless, um, unless I really, really feel in alignment with it, because this is actually a big weakness of mine if I don't have those defense mechanisms. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't have ways of going like this. And so, for example, if you post on YouTube, I often usually will not answer. And it's not because I'm trying to be a jerk or, or be rude. It's because you may know this in your own life. There are certain things which just drain you out. Um, all of my friends know that, that I'm not on social media for the most part. Um, and that's because I'm really susceptible to energy about energy. If I go into a space where there's a lot of Aquarius running, I'm just sapped. My battery is sapped. And so I can't even get started with it. I don't want to because it's actually not healthy. It's a stress issue. Um, I don't freak out or anything, but my metabolism is, is all wonky. Um, if, by the way, you see something, this is just as an aside, and you actually do want to contact me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Just search for Ajani Abdul Kalik. Um, and, and that's for anything. It's for astro hacking, whatever. LinkedIn is the only social media I'm on. Um, but anyways, so, but if you're unique and you've got your Aquarius, Aquarius it, uh, active, then it's easier for me to kind of pay attention to you. So you want to find this in the chart of that person that you're, you're trying to chase. Nanina is one of the strongest asteroids. And, and up until recently, I was like, wow, it's, you know, it's part of a family of about 20 asteroids where when somebody is stimulated, they're going to act for the most part. They may not show you, but there are ways to get you to show those traits to another. I'll talk about Deira in a second. Um, but, but let me go back to Hera. Hera is the asteroid of deep bonds. And so when you're uh trying to get somebody to attach to you and stay attached you can you can turn a person on all day but they may say oh no that's not good that I don't, i'm not feeling i'm not comfortable with that feeling <laughs> right then they just may leave to protect themselves you're going to want them to stay when they're triggered and so hera is where they're like okay well i'm really bonded to this person i can't leave i, I know it's bad <laughs> you know but so you want to you want to turn them up but then you want them to want to stay around while you're manipulating their their hormones and stuff so essentially hera is what's going to keep them to you uh while you're while you're doing whatever you're doing um you need to give them the opportunity to express their hera so so for example mine is in pisces 5 and so when I'm in the mood to just show, I just feel like projecting in some way, it's easier for me to form a deep bond with you. If I'm hanging out with you and I have that ability to just, hey, I don't know, why don't I just put on this hat, right? Then um, it's, I mean, it, it may seem crazy, but if you let me do things like that, um, I'm more likely to bond deeply with you. Let's say that your hero were in, let's just pick a random place, Gemini 5. So what's Gemini 5? Here's Gemini. And remember, wheel goes this way. Inside the wheel, it goes that way. One, two, three, four, five. It's Gemini.leo. So if you had something here, in their internal feedback system, in their brain and their mannerisms, they are showing something. So right now, they're in the mood to just kind of process things. Leave me alone. I want to process things, right? Um, but they want to... They want to project what they're processing because it's Leo, right? So if you let them do that, you're like, okay, now wait a minute. Processing this. And I think I, I, I really would like to present myself this way um, because I see myself as projecting some, you know, you know, as some character. If you let them do that, then you're helping their Gemini 5. You can let them do that by just being in the opposition. Right. You turn on your Sagittarius five, they turn up their Gemini five. And sometimes you can just do both. Anyway, then you've got Deira. Now, this is the new one. And Deira comes from not the first thousand asteroids. It's from the second thousand asteroids. It's asteroid number 1244. 
If you want to see where these things are, by the way, you can go to astro.com or any kind of um, astrology program that allows you to enter the numbers of the asteroids. And I'll show you the numbers later on in the video. Um, I'm not going to show you them now because I've got, I've got windows up and things like that. Um, and I don't always know what the numbers are. But Hera is number 103. Deira is number 1244. And I'll show you Menina when I, I get to it later. Deira is... I, I, I did some research on it. I've been doing new kinds of research. This has like p-values and stuff. It's really much more advanced than what I did in Laurentia. And Deira is the asteroid of... It's like... You know that moment in a date, you're 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 sitting there with somebody, and y'all have been kind of talking it up, um, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, we're done with this. Let's, let's go take off some clothes, right? Deira is the asteroid of that. And the thing that was funny about this is that I got this from statistics. I'm not looking at any charts. I'm just looking at tables of ANOVA results and word mining and people's wiki articles and things like that, and. I'm like, what, what, what is this asteroid doing? So I looked at my own chart, and it turns out that it's in Aquarius 12 in the context of information, the mood. And that's associated with, remember, Pisces, art and film. I love Turner Classic Movies. And if you have Turner Classic Movies playing or something like that, then it's frankly easier to seduce me. <laughs> I'm like really weak. It's that moment. It's funny. There's a, there's a, um, um, an ice skater. Her name was Belita. And I saw her in a movie called Suspense, a noir alley on TCM. I fell in love with this woman. You, you, you watch Suspense and you watch Belita in the very beginning with this, uh, kind of, kind of gangster skit that they're performing. And she skates against this other person and she stops on a dime. I'm like, oh my God, this woman is wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Because not only does she appear in film, classic film, but um, she also has, uh, it's right near in my Nanina. So she's very unique. She's highly, highly skilled. Um, by the way, oh, one thing that I want to know before I show you the rest of the asteroids that are responsible for this is that you can try to turn these on in somebody all day, but if you're not up to their standard, it won't matter. So uh, formerly when I was younger and my standards were lower, frankly, um, it was easy to just kind of be unique and use my Nanina. I told you it was a weakness, um, but basically as I matured, it's not nearly as much of a weakness at all, mainly because my standards for uniqueness are super, 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 super high. So you couldn't these days just read my chart. This is why I don't have a problem telling you know, like the world or anything, because frankly, it's not much of a weakness um, these days. But if you looked at a random person's chart and you saw where their Deira, Nanina, and Hera were, you would essentially, um, you, you'd know where to trigger them, but you'd have to get up to the level for them to really care. Now, the bottom line is that there are things you can do with these three in order to get them to kind of fall for your spell. You take on the tone of their Hera. You are unique in their Nanina. And you basically get them into a Deira situation. And you have them. So this is the beginning of basically how to use your asteroids for evil. Um... I, I kind of joke about that, but but there's a way to mitigate this. Let me show you the rest of the asteroids. So I'm going to come up here and go into my group called Weak Spot. This is the full look. Now, ignore the majors, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, Sun. And I want to kind of talk about these others that appear. The part of fortune is where you're in your element. The part opposite the fortune is the anti-fortune. The anti-fortune just keeps getting stronger and stronger the more I study it. And the idea is that you're in your element in one space, and then there are people or situations that enable you to be in your element. And so, for example, mine is here in Aquarius 10, information.structure. So I identify through my career and 
if you didn't recognize the importance of my work or my career, then essentially you're not recognizing me. And this is basically how a person works in their chart. You find their anti-fortune, and this is what they measure themselves against. It's essentially a kind of second house ruler. And I talk about some proxy rulers in Full Spectrum Astrology, the first book. The points of action, worth, and internal monologue, those are still legit. They still work. And one, of, one surrogate for the point of worth, a kind of second house indicator, is the anti-fortune. It's a better ruler for the second house than a lot of other choices. Most other choices, actually. So you want to be able to acknowledge that this is who they think they are or who they measure themselves against, the anti-fortune. You also have Bacchus, the friends who will never leave you. It's in its R-rated or rated M version. It is also the asteroid of orgies. So these are the people who they'll see you as you are. They don't care as you are. They'll trade with you. They'll do all kinds of stuff. And there's really not much that you can do in order to push them away uh, unless you're trying to do it on purpose. And so Bacchus are like your true blue friends because they don't care how they see you. They're just going to be there no matter what secrets you have. Note, by the way, I have a lot of disclosure in my books, like self-disclosure. In my chart, you can see that my Bacchus is on my midheaven. So my, my friends will never leave me. The self-disclosure, when everybody knows, is also on the public reputation, hence videos like this. And you can see things like this in folks' charts. Then you've got Antiope. Antiope is uh, where you want to be in a relationship. It's the asteroid of your wanting to be there. Because sometimes you end up committing to somebody. Here's the asteroid Juno, number three. And um, this is also there. If it shows up on here, it's going to be useful, by the way. Anything, everything on this screen is useful for your, your, your plans. But... Um, Juno is the asteroid of uh, commitment, like public commitment. It can double as marriage partners, but sometimes, you know, marriages are what they are. Uh, just because you marry someone doesn't mean at all that all the other needs are satisfied, right? You have to kind of work at those things. And you can see from the chart why. Stuff like a deep bond with your marriage partner, Hera, uh, just wanting to be there, Antiope, right? Um those aren't given. They're not necessarily with your Juno. As far as Juno and Antiope are concerned, Juno is what you commit to, and it is often not people, right? So it's it's how you commit. So, for example, my Juno is in Cancer too. The outer wheel goes that way. The inner wheel goes the other way. This is Cancer, so we're going this way. And then inside of Cancer, it's Cancer.Aries, Cancer.Taurus. This is the internal want towards an identity. So I tend to commit to things that foster my ongoing inner need to have a certain kind of identity. Um, so again, we're reading the dual decanates and getting so familiar with it, uh, getting familiar with it. It's not the same as Antiope. It's like, where do you want to be in the relationship? Do you want to even be in it? Sometimes you commit to things like work and you don't want to be there, right? So Antiope is where, you know, I really want to engage this other thing. So this here is in Cancer 4. Cancer 4 is basically the journey of the journey. I want to be there if I feel like it can just be ongoing, ongoing. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. Um, and those are the kinds of things I like to be in. They have to be kind of infinite almost eternal. And again, you can when you look at the person holistically, you can see that some of these these will line up with what you know of them, right? Now, there are also some majors that you care about. Venus. Venus is essentially the dialogue. When you're in a conversation with somebody, you are, uh, again, giving feedback. So they say something, you say something in response. They say something in response to that. You say something in response to that. But it's a two-way conversation in that your every response depends on their previous response, which depends on your previous response. If it's not a two-way conversation, it's a one-way conversation. I talk. You listen. I talk again. You listen again. You say something, but I talk about what I was just talking about. That's more like Leo, right? That's, that's, that's not two-way because my responses are not really taking into account what you just said. I am persisting in what I originally wanted to project. It's not bad, but just know that that's not a 
conversation in the Venus sense. You would be using your sun, right? Your sun sign. Your sun sign is what you project in your one-to-one -one interactions, regardless of what the interactant is saying in response. Um, so that's why the sun is very useful for just general, uh, general astrology. So my sun is in Scorpio. It means that I like to be effective, right? So given my other interactions, I want something to happen in the world. And if I don't feel that you have been moved or affected or changed by what I'm doing, my sun's not working all the way and we're probably not going to last in a fun way, right? Scorpios, more than anything, um, are, they just they just need to feel effective. If, they, if you put them somewhere and they felt like they did it, but nothing changed, nothing moved, um, then in terms of their one-to-one -one interaction, at least, they're likely to kind of pull that back. They're like, okay, well, it's not worth one-to-one -one interacting. I might do other things. I might use my Mars. I might use my Neptune. But I am less likely to use my son, my son when I know my son's not working. Um, if your son were in Capricorn, for example, there's a structure you like. That could be a party structure. But, but there's an element of having the world put a thing in its place. Capricorns can be very funny, very fun, um, because there's, a, there's an element of abstract control in the world um, that we, we want to say, okay, this is the box. This is the box that it goes in, right? And if I feel like I've been able to kind of clarify or structure or do things like that, then my, my Capricorn son is good. If my son is in Sagittarius, it's more like being able to partake of the culture or the actions going on around me. But Aquarius, it's the information being passed, the talk, the social stuff, the music, the humanity, whatever. With Pisces, it's more like the mood. I can express when the mood is healthy. And then all the other signs follow suit. If my son is anywhere in these first four, then I need to be either projecting um, just, I need to be able to just, when I feel like doing something, I feel like interacting with that. Right. Um, then th that's my, my son in Aries Taurus is for identity and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, so, but the sun is actually not one of the ones that we care about for this Venus and the moon are with Venus. You're trying to say that, that I'm engaged in a conversation with you back and forth. And this is how you, you, you use your Venus conversation as a way of establishing your position on all these other asteroids, because there's a lot of ground to cover. You have to tell them what you commit to and what you expect them to commit to. Now, you don't do this overtly, because remember, we're recording this in order to manipulate other people. <laughs> so you're, you're not doing this in order to kind of tell them what you want. Um, you're doing this in order to get them to do what you want them to do. I know it sounds sinister. I got one other asteroid, which will protect everybody uh, at the end. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, we're trying to manipulate people. And because we're trying to do that, uh, we need time to say, oh, yeah, I love that. I, I share that same hobby. Oh, you struggle in that. It just so happens that I'm really good at like helping that. <laughs> so uh, your Venus is where you kind of put all your, your, the appropriate cards on the table and you flip all the appropriate levers to get this person to, to be putty in your hands. The moon is basically how they are feeling about this. Their moon needs to be healthy. If you're giving them weird feelings or weird vibes and their moon's like, I don't know, this person's kind of sinister. I think they're manipulating me. <laughs> right? You lose. It's game over. So you need to make sure that their mood is uh, good. My moon is in Aries. And so I need to be able to feel like, look, I, I want to start this. I want to start it now. And if you tell me that I can't start it now, uh, even though I want to start it now, um, I probably don't like you. <laughs> probably. I'm not very happy. Um, so, uh, no, nah, I'm just kidding. It's not that I don't like you, but I am not happy. That's for, that's for sure. Um, so you want to keep these things in mind when you are trying to manipulate people. Now, I, I, I would be remiss if I did not talk about the negative asteroids because part of, part of trying to get somebody to bend to your will is being able to meet their demand, right? There's some things that they can't do without you. And if you can't help them do those, well, they can't do without help. And if you can't kind of fulfill the supply and demand need there for the things that they are not naturally doing, uh, then you, you have no value. You're a product, which why would they spend their dollar on you, right? So the person is 
often weak in areas like Hamiltonia, Ricarda, and Roxanne. Hamiltonia is where difficulties in your personality uh, prevent you from being the top level in a certain thing. My Hamiltonia is in Capricorn 8, structure dot Scorpio, right? And so in trying to establish structures, wanting to influence people, for example, business, I can't run that stuff worth a damn by myself. I just, I have never been able to do it. Um, difficulties in your personality could be good, could be bad, but the point is that you've got you've you've got a setup which makes it hard for stuff to work where your Hamiltonian is. You and you know it. You know it's a weakness, and so you typically need somebody else to not only help you with your Hamiltonian, but they have to compensate for what you are not able to do. And so, if you wanted to kind of have your way. Um, with somebody with their Hamiltonia in Capricorn 8, you'd have to say, oh yeah, man, I, I believe that, uh, not I believe, I'm very good at influencing people in a business context. Um, in the context of business or structure or architecture or laws or whatever, I'm so good at getting people to do what I want. I'm going to be your buddy. I'm like, I need you. Where were you all this time? And even though I'm saying I don't have these weaknesses, this is still a weakness. Like, if you know how to do this, find me on LinkedIn <laughs> because I, bro, you're like, I'm just, you know. So, but anyway, where you're able to complete a Hamiltonia in the other person's chart, you just may have a practical value for them. And they don't, you know, you, you want to try to seduce them because that was the whole point of this recording. But, you know. Sometimes you just want to fill in the gaps because you want an association with them. You want to use them for some other reason. And the Hamiltonian is, is how that is. Ricarda is where you have to wait until you're called. If you try to do it yourself, it's going to die. It's just going to fail. I don't know why. Um, but it's just the nature of that asteroid. Mine is in Virgo 8, which means in trying to reconcile things, trying to make things make sense, wanting to influence people, saying, you know, it makes sense. This is how you astro hack, for example. Look, look, look at the reasoning of astro hacking. I want you to be able to use the astro hacking as well. Nah, doesn't work. So, well, it doesn't work directly. And so the reason I record these videos is because I can't actually accomplish this in person. I have to leave a video. And when the person out there in the internet world is um, ready on their time, to find this, then they can come in and say, oh, this person used the Virgo reasoning dot Scorpio influence. I can astro hack now. The message is received on anybody's time but my own. Ricarda is where it works on everybody else's time but your own. Imagine that you're trying to get somebody to bend to your will and you know where their Ricarda is. You know full well that you are in control of a certain version of their ability to experience that Ricarda area positively and all the asteroids clustered with Ricarda. Ricarda and Hamiltonia are both part of the mean 13, which I talk about in Laurentia. It's just, there are 13 asteroids among the first 1,000 that just, they just, you know, you, you tend to suck at them by default and you need other people to see the positive in you, to help you or whatever, because you're not going to get it by yourself. Um, Lastly is Rox, Roxanne. Roxanne is the number 317 is where people are inclined to use you despite being made uh, uncomfortable by you there. This is really unfortunate because if you've ever felt like people were just using you, <laughs> right? You know, they're only using me for my money or for my looks or for my status or whatever. Roxanne is often that. So my, my Roxanne is in Virgo 4. Uh, it means in daily task, reconciling, day, Virgo is also the day job, the work job. Um, it's Virgo.cancer, which means I, I'm, I may leave an off-putting vibe. Um, like, we don't want to go to Johnny's office because he's always like trying to be a drill sergeant or something. Or he's always being a stickler or always being weird. He's just weird, right? It's, I'm uncomfortable. And yet, I need the insight that 
he's going to give, even though I know it's going to be negative or whatever. Roxanne is where if you are trying to have your way with somebody um, and you know where their Roxanne is, they're inclined to be used there. And it's your job to put up with their negative traits in that Roxanne. You're going to, they're going to throw things out and you can be like, oh my God, this is so bad. This is so bad. Oh yeah, no problem. You go ahead. It's the, and you're not being disingenuous, but the point is they often, they, they often cannot display that trait without making people squirm. Your job is to not squirm. Now, if you can do these things, you have the cocktail for making somebody putty in your hands. This video is all about how to take Deira and capitalize it, capitalize on it. So now let me show you all the asteroids. Here they are. In Hayden's Book of Sinistry, I have a lot of cocktails for things like this. I do X in order to do X in the way of Y given Z. And you can fill those in with different asteroids and their meanings. So suppose you just want to file this person as a conquest. Um, I, I start here, all my research, by the way, starts with relationship-based research. And then I learn uh, branching off from that topic. If you're asking, well, why this topic or, or something like that, you wouldn't. But, but I just happen to know that whenever I'm going to start something new in terms of research, it begins in this kind of relational, uh, intimacy-based um, topic. Like all of my knowledge starts there. It's kind of like all children start with, you know, parents getting together. So anyways, it's, this is what you do for the cocktail. Taking the easy tone of their hair up, you come across as a top-notch Nanina. <laughs> I'm laughing because you already got me if you do this in my chart. <laughs> and you love, for fun, their Deira. So watch this. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, Ajani, I, I'm just, I'm, you know, I feel like just, just talking to you just because. This is Pisces.5. I feel like talking to you just because. I happen to be a top-notch, unique person. I'm so skilled. My name is Belita. Um, and, you know, for fun, I just love classic movies. I'm like, oh, my God, this is an angel from heaven. <laughs> you, know? and you got me already with these three. We can, we can hang it up. It's over. Um, I'm, I'm going to get to Sylvania in a second. It's, it's over. But uh, now you got me. But... This is just the first conversation. I, I don't even know you, right? We just You just came out of the audience or whatever. What audience? Again, we'll talk about Sylvania. Um, you say, over time, you just start talking, you strike up a conversation and whatever, and you're, you're impressed with their, their anti-fortune, wherever it is. Hey, yeah, man, I, I, just, I just love classic movies. But, but anyway, uh, you're really skilled in your work. <laughs> you're anti-fortune, Aquarius, not Capricorn, right? Yeah, in your work. Um, hey, let's, let's just talk. And in that talk, you let the person use their Venus. My Venus is up here in Scorpio. So I need to feel like in the feedback process, I'm influencing you. It's also Scorpio.Aries. So I'm influencing you in ways that just kind of feel like you want to be influenced. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a good position for listening. If you, if we're talking and <clears throat> you let you let a person with Venus in Scorpio one, frankly, listen and influence you, then they just feel like, oh, this is a great conversation. And again, that's a, that's a weakness for me. And it's the reason why I police my responses to like YouTube and internet or whatever. Um, because essentially anybody who tries to talk to me wins because I love listening. Um, but, but sometimes you have people coming at you that are no good. And you have to cut the communication. So, or they just drain. Maybe they're good. They just drain. So anyway, you're doing, you're having this conversation. Over the course of the conversation, it is revealed that you are just, you would be the great business partner, <laughs> Hamiltonia, uh, wherever Hamiltonia is. That's in my chart, but in your chart, in the chart of your target, your 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 victim <laughs> or something. Um, you're just 
they feel like you would be excellent in uh, in advancing their Hamiltonia because they they screw it up every time they try. And also, you too are on that same journey with their Ricarda. So for me, it's like, oh yeah, I too, man. Whenever I'm working, I'm just trying to get this this system or this this research or whatever to be influenced, Virgo, that Scorpio in my way. And you encourage their moon. Yeah, you should be able to do whatever, whatever you want, when you want. Like, yeah, you're right, you know. Um, and with you, they experience more and better commitment. How do they commit? You look in their chart, right? So if they're Juno or in Taurus, they commit by feeling a certain kind of identity. I am the, the partner of, I am associated with, I am the boyfriend, girlfriend of, right? Mine's in Cancer here. So they're benefiting from all these things. And, and this, by the way, these are to sustain the relationship. If you just want to score, have a date and take it here to Nini Nandira and, and it's over. But the rest of this is to kind of sustain these exchanges. You have to keep the feedback, right, astrologically. Privately, you put up with their Roxanne. They're inclined to be used there because they just, they're no good where that Roxanne is. And that's okay. It doesn't bother you, though. It bothers everybody else. And that gives you an edge over you, your, your competitors. And they really want to be tied to you. Not only are they bound to you through Hera because you take that tone and you let them engage their deep bonds, but they actually want to be there because you let them do their Antiope. Again, we want to get used to reading duodecanates and knowing how to, to read them effectively. So if an Antiope is, say, in um, Libra, let's say it's right here in, let's say it's like 14 degrees Libra. So here's zero degrees, 14 degrees there, and it goes backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it would be in Libra seven. They like to have feedback about their feedback. So it's Libra dot Libra. You let them say, man, I just loved it that time when I was talking to you and we were doing this thing and we were feedbacking like that. And they, you know, they want to be in a relationship where they can reminisce or whatever. You let them do that and they will want to stay, um, at least according to this asteroid by itself. That is no guarantee. Don't, don't quote me on that because we have charts full of thousands of asteroids. But at least Antiope says, this is a cool relationship in which I get to reminisce as much as I want if my Antiope is say in Libra. So they're getting these benefits from hanging out with you. And remind them as you're going that you love they, their Deira for fun. It's like, man, we've been talking for a while. Let's go see a classic movie. I'm like, yay! <laughs> right? and, and you're so cool about it. You're like, I just feel like projecting this way. I'm like, I love you. I love you, right? So this is it. You've, you've got the, the asteroid of seducing somebody, manipulating them, whatever. Here's the thing, though. When all is said and done, you have all these tactics for getting into somebody's life, <laughs> I guess. And whether you want to stay is, is up to your willingness to kind of do this. People have senses of when you're manipulating them. And you really, I, I joked about using your powers for evil, but you never do, right? And I refrain from a long time, and, and you can see I write about this in Hayden's Book of Sinistry. You know, you don't really want to puppet folks. What I've learned recently is that for things like Hamiltonia, sometimes the person wants and needs to be puppeted. So for something like business, I, I will give you the, the keys because I'm just I'm bad at it and I, I, I love watching somebody kill or do it better than I do. So sometimes the manipulation, the, the control, the power is called for by the other person. If you don't display it, you have no value in their life, right? It's like any, any business, any entity, any like Netflix or whatever, I can't come up with, I can't go out in my backyard and go put on a play on my own. I, I need Netflix to give it to me. Right. And they need to have that power. So keep that in mind as we're doing this, because the manipulation is really I, I, I'm using the word manipulation kind of kind of facetiously because you want to be able to bring benefit to the person. The whole point is not simply to to knock off a notch on your bedpost. It actually is to benefit them. Keeping that in mind, the last asteroid I want to mention is 519 Sylvania. The truth is, though, you know, all my weaknesses you will never meet me um, if you don't go to my Sylvania. 
Sylvania is a member of what I call the Royal Seven. The Royal Seven Asteroids for Making Dreams Come True. There's seven really strong asteroids for making, like you got, you got wish lists of various kinds. There are seven asteroids among the first thousand or so which are useful for that. Sylvania is basically where that person needs to go in order to have their wishes granted. So if you think about this, if you meet them in a place other than their Sylvania, you may not be granting their wishes, right? You may be granting your own. And if you're granting your own, but you haven't triggered the fulfillment of their wish, all of this stuff does have a higher chance of looking like and indeed being just plain old manipulation on your part and it won't go. It won't even start, right? You'll never meet. You'll, they'll, they'll have various things in their world that just block your communication. When you do this, what I'm saying is that if you're going to dominate them, you need to have their best interest in mind. You actually do. You're like, man, I really want to conquer this person, but they need to want to be conquered, right? And a lot of this is, is just kind of putting that in effect. So where that Sylvania is located is where you actually, is where their worlds are set up to have various experiences granted. Sylvania, I, I, I liken it to the convenience store. You want to win the lottery? You need to go to a convenience store where lottery tickets are sold, right? And if you're not hanging out around your Sylvania, you basically just don't have access to the tickets. So you can't even play. So suppose that your Sylvania is in, um, what have I not talked about today? Let's say your Sylvania is in Leo. Let's just put it here in 10 degrees Leo, right there. Oh, no, no. How, let's, let's put it in 23 degrees Leo. That means it's right there. Leo 1, 2, 3. So it's Leo.Gemini. That means that that person needs to go into a space where in the context of being themselves, they can just express their opinion. You really have to catch them where they are in the middle of a hobby or something they like doing because it's just them. It's just their personality and they're airing their opinion. They're like, you know, Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> that tells you how old I am. <laughs> they're sitting there and they're rating the movies and they're like, this is my opinion, right? If you meet them there, in that space and let them project there, that's going to be an opportunity for their dreams to be granted. And then you can kick in all your manipulations and your manipulations will actually work in their favor. And everybody wants this game to go positively. So um, I say, you know, you can use your, you can astro hack this stuff, but um, uh, kind of an interesting uh, personal note. I, don't care about this for the most part. Um, usually in, in my own, on my own life, I'm all about my work and my research. And, um, the, the timing of this is funny because I don't even need this, but the asteroid day era was so interesting that, uh, I, I go back to old, not old, younger me who would have wanted this to work. And what it's essentially saying is that if you're going to manipulate somebody, follow some rules to keep their best interest in mind. And I, as a Scorpio, um, prefer long-term stuff anyway. So if I'm trying to manipulate you, I'm trying to hit the target on the bullseye one time. I'm not, I'm not trying to file through a bunch of people. I'm like that one, that one, and that's it. So this is a, this is not always sinister. It may be the kind of one shot deal for you and your dream person or whatever. Uh, because again, we, we want to, we want to get to them, but, but we want to benefit and we want them to benefit and we want everybody to want to be there. And you have other priorities in your chart, which won't exist here, which will help you advance that. This is astro hacking and this is how it works. Um, a lot of this begins with true consideration of the other person though. And you never want to, you know, Immanuel Kant, the, the categorical imperative. You never want to just use people and treat them as objects. If you're going to, if you're going to point your arrow at someone, um, 
you're more likely to hit the target if they're pulling the arrow towards themselves because they want you to be there and you're not just puppeting them after all.